Lloyd Wire here, Wire Daily TV every Wednesday around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And yeah, today we're going to be doing some more experimenting with the Artistic Wire Deluxe Jig Kit. A lot of people have expressed interest in the jig. I have some, a tutorial coming up for how to make letters on the jig. That's uh, something fun in the works. And yeah, so I did all those Celtic designs for rings and earrings. And today I'm going to troubleshoot some ideas. Uh, I had some special requests, so I'm going to have a look and see about that. Um, so many, so many special requests. Uh, Dolly requested some jig uh, findings for earrings and for class. So that'll be coming up on a Tip Tuesday video. Hi Deb, how are you doing? Sorry I'm a little bit late, but uh, technical difficulties. I couldn't get my thumbnail to work. So here we are, we're here. I'm going to just pull up the comments, turn off my sound. And hi Leslie, how you doing? Everyone's hopping on. Elizabeth, hello Elizabeth. And sweet craft, awesome. So I'm gonna do my best to see my computer from here. I'm on my iPod, on my computer. Hi Carol, hi Heather. And um, yeah, so I had some special requests. Also had requests for an easier moon video. So I'm gonna work on the ideas for that. Also a rose bead with a little um, with a little bead in it from Helen. She asked for that, and uh, Ada asked for a wine glass ring. So we're gonna work on that. And um, oh, Miss Tisha asked for a lotus flower. So we're gonna work on not all of these today, but a bunch of these. And then I had a request for a snake ring, and I'm trying to find out who requested that. If you're the one that requested a snake ring, let me know because. I can't seem to find it on my list, but I will find it and um, and shout you out for sure. So we have um, Barbara's here. Hi, Barbara. Hi, hi, Amber. I'm not uh, present. Yeah, no, no worries. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it, Amber. If you, I know there's a one day a week a month that you can't uh, help out, and also I know you're really busy, so don't worry about that at all. We'll make it work today. I'm not going to do a super long live stream, but the other thing I wanted to say, guys, is I did a little tweak for the live wires for the win competition. I know a lot of people were intimidated by the idea of having to submit a video uh, sort of introduction, so I have removed that from the requirements to apply for live wires for the win. So if you would like to apply to uh, be in the competition. Uh, I'll, I'm going to repost the video after this live stream and how it works. It's like the regular 10 day challenges, but with a little twist in that we have, we're going to have uh, eight contestants that are competing in weekly elimination challenges to win $500 worth of beetle on tools and wire supplies. So that's awesome. So look out for that. You have until June 30th to apply. And if you don't uh, sort of get into the competition part, you can still participate for prizes in the weekly challenges. So that's exciting. So we have, hi Joan, how you doing? Uh, Leslie, hi, bye. Okay, there we go. And so let me just flip the screen and we're gonna work on some more jig designs. So I'm just gonna flip that around. Perfect, there's our nice green grass. We're gonna bring this one around. It's not a super bright day out there, but we'll just see what we can do. And I still have to fix the glitch with the video that it keeps going in and out of focus. So that's a work in progress. I think I'm actually gonna to try to stream on my camera from now on, if I can figure it, that out. So let's get our tools. This is the Artistic Wire Deluxe Jig Kit. I have my favorite, favorite red pliers. I have some cutters and I have my round pliers, the bigger round pliers and my flat pliers. So everybody always asks me where I get my pliers. These ones are 30 years old and no longer available, but I know that the Zeron brand, the Tronex brand, and even the Beadsmith brand were recommended. So if you guys have recommendations for pliers, be sure to put them in the comments as well. So these are all our little pegs for the jigs. And then what I have is a blank template that I will, if the designs work out well, we'll just write down the, um, the configuration. And I actually found another tutorial for a flower that I'd done on the jig that wasn't in the jig a playlist. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm going to post it in the community section after this video as well. So let's go ahead and get going with our pegs. So I'm going to just, I was thinking for this one to do a very simple one 
for the um, to try a kind of a wiggly snake thing, but it might not end up being a snake at all, but we're going to see. So what I'm going to do is just put the pegs in and then you need these plugs. If you ran, ran out or you lost all your plugs, I have a source for where you could buy these plugs now. You could either buy a big uh, thing of tubing and cut them up yourself, or you can buy them in my DIY Etsy shop. So I will also link that up below. And let's just get going. We're going to put uh, just like a wiggly sort of configuration of these pegs and see what we can do and we might have to adjust them after it's all about uh, trial and error with these jigs and you can get patterns uh, online uh, there's different jig companies there's the wig jig company there's a thingamajig company then my favorite of course is the beetle on artistic wire deluxe jig kit this is the one i've had for years and um, i also have the patterns uh, that I've done for the videos in the playlist in my DIY Etsy shop so you can check those out as well. I have a package with all the with all the patterns. So if we just start with a kind of configuration like this back and forth and um, yeah let me know in the comments if you have a jig, uh, if you are working with the jig if, and what sort of things you've made with it that would be really interesting. So we're just going to keep going like this and we're going to do like a zigzag thing and I am going to get some 20 gauge wire because the 20 seems to be the easiest wire to use with the jig. You can use 18, but it's very difficult to get in between those spaces. So if we have the 20, I'm just going to cut a long piece. Um, Sweetcraft, that's good to know. I'll have to have a look. Definitely. And Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Uh, we're working again with the jig, Peggy, and I'm going to try some more ring designs. I had some special requests. I had someone requ request a snake ring. Sadly, I can't find who that viewer was, but I will definitely... Um, definitely uh, find their name and uh, put it in the description. If you're wondering what this configuration is, this is the uh, spool tamers that Beetleon sent me and they help keep your wire on the spool. These are really amazing. I'll put a link to those in the um, description as well. You can, I think you can find them on, um, on Amazon as well. Uh, snake rings for the, for the thumb. That's a great idea. Like this one actually might not look much like a snake but I'm just going to I'm just going to try it and see so I'm just going to cut about a foot of wire I don't think I need that much and then the idea would be to I guess we'd have to do a face first or a head first and then go do the wiggly thing so let's see what we can do uh, it might be fun to do like a little eyeball uh, you could maybe do a bead eyeball but maybe to keep it simple I'm just going to do like a little round eyeball and uh oh beautiful i wish i could i wish i could read your name there um i if i had more time i would cut and paste it into google translate and see but whoever uh, po just posted the comment beautiful thank you so much and feel free to type your name in the chat uh if you would like so if we're gonna do like a little head you can do uh, snakes have kind of pointy pointy uh, ends of their nose I think and you could even do like a little tongue sticking out or something this might not look anything like a snake but just to get the concept we're just going to do like sort of a snake head thing we're gonna see we're just gonna play around with it and see so if we had like a little a little head doesn't look much like a snake but that's okay we're gonna play hi Jackie we're gonna just play around with it and see what we can do so if we just bring this one down like that just because you can't do that tiny little hole on the jig. I guess you could use do a pin, like use a pin to do it or something. But uh, yeah, so if we start like that, it looks a little bit like a head of a snake. And then we just bring this one down here. I don't know how many of these we're going to have to do. So, so if we just put it in here and then do these down and up. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> and I don't even know if my spacing is great this is where you figure out what works best yeah I think my spacing maybe isn't great because if I do this it's going to be like really tight maybe too tight let me just see I'm going to play with it and then if it's too tight we could actually it might be better to do be, be too tight and then we can stretch it out after because if it's too loose it's going to be hard to tighten up so let's just do this 
back and forth. Oh, there's a FedEx, FedEx truck outside of my house. I hope it's for me. I'm expecting a very special delivery for a project for my comic uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, so I'm wondering if that's what that is. That might be. So this is kind of do, working well, this type of thing. Hi, Maria. Buenos dias. Hello, hello. Uh, you could do two eyes on each side and shape the head. Ooh, that might be interesting. I like that idea, Peggy. Maybe I could try that uh, after or another time. So we just have this funny looking thing, but it's kind of cute, actually. I don't, I don't mind this at all. And then be, instead of putting a whole bunch of pegs there, why don't we just, we'll pull it back and just keep going this way. That way you don't have to put tons of pegs on your jig form. You can just go ahead and um, pull it back and then do it this way. That way it's just a little bit easier. You don't have to use all your pegs and especially if you don't have all your pegs. I mean, people might have lost their pegs. So we're just gonna go around here and then usually it has to be about two inches to go all the way around the finger. So let's just do maybe one more because we're gonna run out of wire. So I'm just gonna bring this one like down like that and same here we're just going to go up and down and basically I think I can remember this configuration uh, but if I wanted to I could go ahead and put it there uh, okay it's uh, da, 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 there it's me a jab okay so hi a jab there we go so yeah so we don't we don't let me just put this okay yeah, so please don't uh, ask people to subscribe to you because we're just uh, we just want to keep this focused on what we're doing with the wire project. So there we go. So we have this one here. Oh, hi, Amanda. How are you? Amanda, I was just looking at um, your video popped up on my uh, on my um, notifications. So that's great. You've been a busy bee for sure. Nice to see you. So there we go. Now, I'm missing a bunch of comments, so if I miss your comments, just let me know and I'll go back. Uh, hi, Ruth. Hey, Wendy, how are you? You got your internet back. Fantastic. So, thank you for accepting my request. Dolly, yes, you requested the findings. So, Dolly, I will definitely do yours on a Tip Tuesday video probably next week. We'll do some findings with the jig, and uh, I think it'll, it'll work out really well. So, let's just go ahead. I'm just going to, for the snake... Oh, you know what? I don't even need to do it with the pencil first. Usually I draw it out with the pencil first. And so now I do daily uploads. Oh, wow. That's quite a job. Posting every day is definitely a job. I do that for the challenges. When I do the 10 day challenges, I post a video every day and, um, I usually film them in advance, quite a bit in advance, because otherwise it's, uh, it's quite a bit of work. So yeah, I'm just going to do that to remember the snake. And um, I'll just write it down here. So we have that snake, and there we go. So uh, Sweet Craft, do they sell replacement pegs? They definitely do. So if you need the replacement pegs and the plugs, you can get them on the Beadalon website. So just go to Beadalon.com, and they have, the, um, they have the replacement pegs. If you just need the plugs, these little plugs, I sell them in my Etsy shop, or I have a Tip Tuesday video on how you can buy the tubing and just cut your own. So uh, depending on how many that you need. Um, I got one of those cheap on Amazon warehouse uh, this week, half price. Oh, that's so cool. So is that for the jig, Ruth? Uh, Ruth you got the jig uh, on the, Am yeah, Amazon's having all kinds of sales, like for Prime members as well. So here's the snake. And then what we want to do is I do want to... Uh, kind of wind the end a little bit. It's going to look like a little bit like a um, rattlesnake because we'll have like a little bit of a coil on the end. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to hold this in place with the two wires. So we'll just hold these two in place. And then I'm going to wind this one around. So it'll look a little bit like a rattlesnake. So round and around and around, maybe, I don't know, five times or something. So that's cute, just like that. Or we could even do it a fifth, six times. So there we go. So I just coiled it around. Looks like a rattlesnake. Uh, mine got loose too easy and they're short. Ah, yes. Yeah, well, I looked everywhere for a, a, a silicon tubing that would be the right size, and I ordered a bunch on Amazon that were not the right size, but this seems good. The outer diameter is four millimeters and the inner diameter is two millimeters. So if that helps, 
if you even have a local hardware store and want to look for uh, uh, that kind of tub tubing there, uh, you could totally do that. So now we want to just line these up a little bit. Okay, we're just going to line those up. And then I'm going to give that a pinch so it's going to hold in place. So let's just give that a little pinch here. And the other thing you could do is you could probably dangle like a little bead on there or something. I don't know if it was would look very well, good or not. Let me have a look and see. Yeah, this is kind of neat, eh? We're going to see how it's going to work. Because if you put like a little bead on there, I don't know if it's going to, you could. Like use your, use your, you know, judgment if you want to put a bead on there or not. And then the other thing you can do is if you're worried about this like slipping, like say this is going to slip back and forth, you can um, you can either either pull that wire back and wrap it around to hold it in place, or just give it a good little pinch. Okay, that way you it'll be more clean. Give it a good little pinch, so it's not going to slip. And then this one you can just clip it like super super tight in there. And if you need to, you can get a um, file. So I have all kinds of stuff in here. I had a file. Let me see if I could find it. Um, hmm. I don't see my file in here, but let me look in my cupboard because I have some other stuff in here. This is a pretty good file. There we go. It's not my favorite file, but it's okay. So if we get the file, what are you making? So I'm making a snake ring, Wendy. And then Lida says, so pretty, thank you. Oh, thanks, Jane. <laughs> thank you, Peggy. There we go. So we're just going to do this. This is how I just file the end a little bit to smooth it out. And so here's the snake ring. Uh, these ones are getting a little bit out of place. But what you can do now is use your round pliers and just kind of wiggle them around a little bit. This is the first time I've made this, but this uh, somebody had asked for a snake ring and I thought oh well maybe we can do it on the jig so just lining these up is a little bit difficult they kind of like move around you could probably hammer a little bit too but I actually like the way it's kind of staggered it's not like perfect and but I think it's going to be a little short so if you need to open it up a bit I should have maybe done another loop but the trouble was I might have run out of wire because my wire wasn't long enough so uh, next, when I do the template, when I draw out the template, I'll probably add at least another little loop or something. But that's not too bad. And so now we have to wind it around the ring cone. Let me just find the ring cone wherever it is. Ah, here it is. Perfect. Uh, Charluna, hello. You actually caught me live. I'm actually live right now. Usually every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're in Montreal. Uh, this week I was five minutes late because I had technical difficulties with my thumbnail, but, um, so there we go. So here's a little cute little snake. I kind of like the head. It's very plain, but I also like Peggy's idea to do two eyes. So now we're going to just take this, wrap it around. I don't really mind that these are getting a little distorted, but maybe there's something we can do with that. So if we just bring this one around, I want to make it not too big. And you also want it to be able to hold in place. So yeah, we're gonna have to like put it higher up on the ring cone to really get it bent in. So we're gonna bring that one in. Uh, you're so happy you can stay the whole video. Awesome, that's, yeah, that's great, Peggy. I'm glad that you're free today. So now we are going to pick these up. See, these got a little distorted. So now what we have to do for that is just, if we just un, roll that a little bit. We're just going to give it a little bit of a flick of the wrist. And then we want to try to like manipulate these so they stay somewhat one on top of the other. They don't have to be perfect because I really don't mind if they get a little spread out, but at the same time, we want them to be somewhat lined up. So let's just keep playing around with it to see what it does. That's not too bad. Like they stay somewhat lined up. They're a little bit you know, you could even like, what I'm thinking now is maybe we could even do wind them with wire a little bit to uh, A, keep the wires together, but B, also give it some texture. So let's look at it like that first. 
So that's kind of funky, the 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 uh, snake. I would maybe make that longer for sure and then wind it with wire. But why don't we actually make this one plain and we're going to count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's maybe make seven rounds this time. Let's do another one. Why not? Let's do another one. I'll do it in gold this time. So let's do that. Uh, Sand Taylor, they look cute like that, just like movement. Yes, it looks like it's moving. Yes, what if you hammer it on the cone? That would be a good idea to hammer it as well. Yeah, I like that idea as well. So let me get the... We're going to try it in gold. Oh, that's 18. I don't want 18. Oh, I need the um, I need the 20 gauge gold. So let me grab the 20 gauge gold and see if I have it here still. This one should be good. This is 20 gauge wire. Yeah. Okay, I'll use this one. This is actually the para wire. I don't like the para wire as much. I find it really soft. But because I'm going to wrap it with 24 gauge, it should be okay. So let me cut a longer piece this time. I'm going to cut it about, oh, about 18, about 20 inches, I think. Let's cut about 20 inches. It's going to be way too long, but that's okay. Uh, Maria says, Hermosa, thank you. Gives you an idea to do the wire weaving. Exactly, yeah. You could definitely do wire weaving for this for the snake. Um, I'm not a huge wire weaver, but I might have to end up doing that to hold those wires together. But I'm going to try just to wind them. So now why don't we try Peggy's idea to do a snake face. So I'm just going to get some paper and just do a little sketch of the snake face. Let me just see what I can find here. And we'll try it because I always like to try different things when I'm doing uh, the design. So we're gonna see what we can find for like a, a snake face idea. I'll just uh, get some paper and a pencil. Maybe if I just do it on here. Okay, and then we're just gonna do a little picture of like a snake face. So I don't know what, what it would look like. It would look like something, maybe like something like that. And I don't know if you would do like a like a nose or something. I'm gonna have to see what would look what would look good because we could do like a little also do like a little tongue or something, but that might not look like anything. So I'm not quite sure the best thing to do for that. Um, what do you guys do? You guys have any suggestions for the face of how it could look? I'm not quite sure. My sister lives where there are loads of rattlesnakes. Ooh, yeah, you should definitely make her make her one of those. Yeah, so let me know if that snake face looks and it, like very good. So I'm not quite sure the best thing to do with that. So I'll just play around with it and see. Because we could do the, that, but it doesn't look like much. So you guys let me know, like say we did that and then like that type of thing. We could do something like that or maybe down like that, just the two eyes. So no, no, no tongue, just the two eyes. Let me get a eraser and let's see. I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna Google snake silhouette. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find anything. Snake, snake face. Sometimes there's clip art that you can use to give you ideas. Like sometimes there's like free clip art that you could get ideas for drawings, but there's really, if you look at snake face silhouette, there's really not that much. I, I'm i just gonna, I think I'm just gonna wing it. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do it very plain. It kind of looks like a sock puppet, but uh, let's try it and see what it does. Put tiny beads for the eyes. Ooh, that would be a good idea too. Mm, maybe that would be a good idea to try if I have some tiny beads. Let me get my small beads and see what I have. I really should have more beads prepped, but these are my smaller beads. So let's see what we have for small beads. And that I like that idea of doing one with beads and one without beads. I mean, I have these tiny ones. They're, they're kind of plain looking. It would be nice if I had some kind of shimmery ones. Uh, what color eyes do you think? Like, do snakes have red eyes? Let me know what you think. You keep losing sound. Oh no, I made a wire weave snake ring. Ooh, that see the wire weaving I think is really conducive to the snake 
I think that's a really good idea. Let me know what color eyes I should do on the snake. I have some red. I could try some other color if you guys think it's good. So a uh, red, green, or gold. Maybe red, eh? So let's try the red. I'll just, because they'll show up a little more. These aren't the best beads, but they might work all right. And it's just, you know, a sample. And also, as always, you guys can just put your own spin on it if you try this. And uh, I'm always delighted to see what you guys create as well. So let's just try this. We're gonna find the middle part. Dark emerald green would be nice too. Yeah, I don't know if I have a dark, dark green. So let's just go for the, let's just go for the gold or the red for now. I just have to find two that are the same size. Um, ish. Let's see what we've got. These two are, and now let's just hope they fit on this wire too. So why don't we go ahead and just make the nose? So we're gonna make sure that's kind of um, centered. We're going to bend that one up a little bit and then we're going to bend this for the eye. So we're just going to pull this one over here and put the bead on there. Whoop, my thing's jiggling. And oh, there we go. So we're going to get that one on here. And yeah, I'm hoping to uh, fix the glitch with the blurry camera at some point soon. i uh, next time I'm going to try to maybe stream on my on my actual camera and that might be better because I find with this with this um, iPod it, it goes in and out of focus so there's that like that let's see if we can now I don't know if his his nose got a little distorted out of place so let's just try to fix that one up a bit because I don't want it too small either okay let's just bring that one down perfect and then we're gonna bring this one across. Okay, and hopefully it's gonna be okay. Sometimes when you wind the bead around, it gets kind of pulled out of shape. So let's put this one on here. And dark red or green, I have a pick. Oh yeah, normally I would get you to share a pick on Discord, but um, I don't think, I don't think that, unless you have the, Shar, do you are you a member of Discord already? Because if you have the link to Discord, you can share a picture of the snake um, on Discord. Or maybe I think it's going to be too complicated for me to look at it right now. But you can. Um, I'll, I'll look after. I'll look after on Google and see if I can find more images. But for now, here's the idea. So just like little tiny eyes wound in there. But now we have to really like this wire. Honestly, this wire I find very soft. I'm not a fan of para wire. It's, um, I find the beetle on wire, the artistic wire is much more solid. Maybe it's just the colors that I have here, but uh, this wire is very, very wobbly. So now we're gonna bring this one in here and that'll be the head. It's kind of cool, it's kind of cool. It's maybe a little hard to see because it's so small. Hi Clarice, the jig is so fun. Yes, the jig is such fun. I love the jig and I'm really having fun revisiting it and uh, coming up with some design ideas for you guys. Clarice, I don't know if you were on earlier, but I found another design for a jig flower that I had made that wasn't in the, was, wasn't in the jig playlist. So I'll definitely um, link that up in the community section. You like it? Oh, thank you. So very plain design. It got a little warbly, but it's okay. So let's put it back on the jig. And now we're going to do this part. So we're gonna go back and forth. And how many did we say we needed? I have to remember a seven, I think we said, eh? Is that how many I said that I was gonna do? So right now we'll just do this many and then I'll move it over. Okay, so we have one, two, three. So we'll do three and then we have to go over this way back and forth. Okay, we'll just go back and forth. And then we're going to move it along the jig. I should have maybe set up another uh, set of pegs and then it would have been like three plus four and so, instead of like, I'll have to go through, I'll have to move it a couple of times. So there's that one. And then we're going to move it back here and do from here. Okay, we're going to make sure we line it up in the right place. So we're gonna go in here, get that one. Whoop, it's a little finicky in there. So definitely the jig, using the jig is a bit of a learning curve. You really wanna like hold the ends with your fingertips 
so they stay in place. And actually, rather than having to move it again, I might just get another peg and stick it in there. It's gonna be easier. Uh, I have to find one the right size because there's a small size and then there's like a medium size. So if we just put that one here, whoop, that's in the wrong place, is that? No, that's in the right place. So we're gonna go here. So then that way we have one, one, two, three, I think we managed to do another one. Here, I'm gonna do two more. So how many do we have? One, I'll do this first. Okay, bring that one over here. And I'm losing track. So this one, and then we're gonna count how many we have. I think I said I wanted to do seven. So let's just, because last time we did one, two, three, four, five. So let's do seven. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. Oh, whoa, that's, is that all? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, maybe I moved it over twice. And then here we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five. So let me move it. I'm going to move it over again. And then we'll do two more. Okay, so we're going to bring it over here. So we've got it there. And then we're going to go six and then seven. Okay, that'll be good. Perfect. Excellent. And then over here, uh, seven. Thanks, Joan. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you guys are my memory bank because sometimes I forget. So we're going to go here. Yeah, they're getting a little, because I didn't put the plugs in them either, so they're getting like a little kind of pushed to the side. So let's get that one down. Yeah, this one, it's very tight in there. So we're just going to get that one in here. And then, yeah, why is this one not going in? So we're going to just play around with it a little bit. I think it's good. It actually would maybe be easier if you put all your pegs in at once. If you have enough pegs, I think I'm going to set up the jig template so you have all your pegs already there because when you pick it up and move it over, it's a little bit more difficult. So there's seven. There we go. So there we go. Grabbing a coffee. Nice. Yeah, I had my coffee this morning, so I'm good. Amber's back. Nice. Speaking of forgetting, Kelly and I were out walking. I totally space. Okay, yes. Yeah, Wednesday today, and I was a little late. So, okay, so there we go with the with the ring, uh, with the snake. And then what I will do, I'll do the same thing with the with the little rattle. And, yeah, pointing down. So let's do the same thing where we get the, we're going to just take this and we'll do like the little rattle at the end of the snake's tail. I cut this too long. So I cut it about 20 inches. So probably even 16 is good. So we're going to do this four times, three, four. And I could even try to dangle a bead this time. Why don't we just take this opportunity to do all kinds of of experiments and then we'll have two to compare it might have another cup yes i need coffee <laughs> yeah yeah i might pick up a coffee after this uh I, you know what coffee i love and i feel bad for people that are in the states that don't have tim hortons but i mean there are there are some tim hortons in in the states now but um in canada tim hortons is our iconic coffee shop and they've started making cold brew and it is amazing it is so good it's very rich. It's very delicious. So if you're anywhere near a McDonald or a Tim Hortons and you like coffee, uh, grab a cold brew. If you like iced coffee, it's so, so, so good. Even better than our local like coffee shop, our barista coffee shop. I just love it. So now if you did that like that and you want to put a dangly bead, uh, what you could do, this might or might not work. So what I'm going to do is just take this and um, cut it to like a quarter inch or something. And then we are going to, uh, yeah, Clarice likes coffee. I think that's one of your favorite um, emojis, eh, Clarice, the coffee emoji? You definitely like coffee. So here's just like a little loop. This might or might not be a good idea. In fact, I probably should have just put a regular bead there, not dangling, but just for the sake of trying something different because this is our chance to do that. We're going to take that and then we can get our scrap or you can get a head pin, which I actually have gold head pins. So why don't I grab mm -hmm. one? I went to the trouble to buy them. So why don't I grab the gold head pins? I just have to find them and then uh, we'll use that instead. 
silver. I have all my findings in separate bags. Yeah, so these are all my gold findings. I put them in zippy bags. Uh, Peggy, I was thinking about making a cold brew and putting it in the fridge. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I've heard people make their own cold brew. And basically, I think it's just, you just soak coffee in water, basically. I think, uh, Peggy, let me know if that's how you make your cold brew. Because I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. They just soak the coffee 24 hours in water, cold water. And it makes cold brews. So here are these head pins. Have I even used them? Yeah, I've used them. The package is open. And there we go. Uh, perfect. So here is the head pin. And then if we want to put like a little dangly bead, I don't know how big we want the bead. What color bead should we do? Should we also do a red bead or should we do a different color bead? Because I have all kinds of colors. I have... I have blue, I have purple, I don't know. You guys let me know what color bead I should dangle from the tail and uh, and then I'll put that on. Hi, Ashita, how are you? Tim says, nothing on my cold brew. <laughs> That's so funny. So you have your own secret recipe, do you? Okay, so which one should I put for the for the bead? And I mean, we could put a larger bead too, but that would just depend on you know, what kind of look. This one's a little big though, that's six millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do like a um, a four millimeter on there. And actually maybe I'll put it after and uh, I'm gonna weave it first. So you guys can decide what color I'm gonna dangle there. And let's just, let's just wind it with some wire first. I don't think I'm actually gonna do wire weaving because I've now placed these wires together. Although I bet you could weave it and then attach the end after. That may be a good idea. Okay, green. Okay, so we could, oh, do I have green? Let me just see if I have green. Oh, I should have green, but you know what? I think I'm a little low on green, but if I used, I could use a cat's eye bead for the green, which wouldn't be too bad. So why don't I just see about that? I'm just going to cut some cat's eye or gold. I don't think I have a little one in gold. I have yellow. Yeah, I have this green or I have the yellow. So there we go. So let's go ahead. I have green. Yes. Yeah, so you could teleport me some green uh, miracle beads. That would be awesome. So let's cut some of this 24 gauge wire and see what we can do with that. I think I might have been better to weave some wire around it before attaching the end, but that's okay. We're just gonna play with this blue. Okay, we have a vote for blue too. I might just pick one at random. So let's go ahead and take this wire because see how this moves around, which is sort of the problem we had the first one. Uh, we can go ahead, oh, now I had another idea. Why don't we, I wonder if you could weave it and then put it on the jig, but I think it might be too tight to do that. We'd have to see. So for this, I would probably start in the middle. I usually find it easier to start in the middle. Gloria says, how can I get designs for, uh, for templates? So I do have some uh, uh, template designs in my DIY Etsy shop. Uh, you can definitely get some templates there. And I think there are other free templates for more generic designs, like the little, um, just the little basic designs. If you Google, you could Google search uh, wire jig templates. And there are definitely some available on Google, but I, I, I definitely have the ones that correlate with my tutorials in my uh, DIY Etsy shop. So you can get them there. Uh, the link is in the description of all my videos and it's called um, Heather Boyd DIY. So this is kind of interesting, you know, and weaving takes so long. This is an interesting alternative and it gives it a little dimension because the wires look like they're a little bit staggered. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you can definitely get some uh, ones like other generic designs uh, like on Pinterest, on Google and stuff like that. But the ones that correlate exactly to the tutorials that I've done, uh, there's always links in the description so you can grab those. And I'm making more all the time, which is super fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying the rings made with the, with the, with the jigs. And Beadalon even makes a, like a huge jig, which I haven't tried. I haven't, I don't have it, but they have one to actually make uh, sun catchers and larger larger designs with. So if you look on the Beadalon website, 
they have, it's called like a really big or super size jig. So that looks really interesting. So this is, wow, I'm kind of liking this guys. It's different. And let's go ahead and clip the end. And then we're going to go, yeah, so it looks like a weave, but it's basically, I'm just winding wire around. So it's very, it's very simple and it holds these wires together. So that's good to know. And to me, simplicity is best. You know, I, I'm always looking for the easiest way to do things. So, and then if you need to kind of adjust those, just get your pliers. So we're going to go around here, round and round. The only thing that I'm always a little bit weary of with weaving and wire winding and stuff like that is does it leave an impression on your fingers so I guess if the if the ring is not too um tight it should be okay but I always have the impression that I'm going to get like little lines on my finger or something so let me know what you guys think about that if that happens to you but this is super interesting so let's just bring that around and then we're going to clip the end and clip it so it's not going to be touching the skin like kind of halfway there and then you can give it a little pinch. So there we have our funky looking uh, snake. Interesting, I like the eyes, they're, they're really cool. And then if you need to stretch it out, you can always stretch it out a little bit too. This, I don't know if I'm convinced about the rattle with the bead, but that too is something you guys can decide what you want to do. So uh, check out the large jig. Yeah, really interesting, eh? Yeah, yeah. I've asked them if, if maybe they could send me one at one point because it's very cool. And then, of course, you can make your own jigs with wood and nails. And I'm working on uh, making like a little kit with a special kind of dense foam board and pins and different templates that people can do use for a jig as well. I do have a tutorial to... Um, a video about that making a cloud with your own DIY jig made with um, fun foam, which is kind of cool. So now here's the here's the snake, and let's just bring it around. This might be really bulky, but we're gonna see a garter snake. Ooh, now there's an idea. You could do different colors, I guess, if you wanted to make a garter snake. What colors? What color are garter snakes? I'd be curious to know. Yeah, this wire is very soft, but that's okay. We're just going to play with it. Um, this is interesting. It's definitely different. This is what you call a novelty ring. Kind of fun. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm loving the wrap. It's, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. And then if you do want to dangle a bead on there, this is a little... I'm finding this one a little bit long. So I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Like, just imagine, like, because the other one, I did the little, this little thing. I don't know if I want to do the same thing, because if we hang the bead down, it's going to be really long. I'm not sure. I might even pull this back. I mean, you could do it that way if you want, now that you've seen how it looks. But say I wanted to change that up a little bit. What if I change my mind about that? Because, you know, you guys know I like to change my mind. So why don't we take this? I'm going to just pull that wire back, okay, and hopefully it's not going to snap or break, okay, because my eyesight's not as great as it used to be. Hopefully my hair is not sticking out under the, um, in the video. Sometimes I know when I look too close at my project, you can see my hair sticking there. So say we just take this. Now we don't have to wind it around as much, actually, because the wires are already secured with the thinner wires. So say I pull this back, can you bend the tail a bit? Mm, now, which way do you mean to bend the tail? Just to bend it up? I could have, yeah, maybe that would have been a better idea to bend it up and then that way it wouldn't, um, that way it would uh, not be sitting so low on the finger. But what if we do this and, cause I really honestly don't mind to destroy <laughs> the things that I'm working on. So let's, because you always learn something in the process. So let's get another B. And what happens if we just put like a bead on the end like that? That's kind of interesting. That's a little big, that one. Let me see what else I have. I have also, ooh, this one's interesting. It's a bead that's wrapped with wire that I made a while ago. I like that. That kind of looks like a rattlesnake thing too. Why don't we just stick that one on? Because it's already got the wire wrap. Because look, compared to this plain, 
compare a plain bead, looks kind of boring, and then we're going to put this one with a wire wrap. That looks amazing. Uh, it reminds me of my friend Serena. She has a business that she runs for women entrepreneurs called uh, uh, Business Betterment. And she her motto is she takes your business from meh to uh, wonderful or something. I forget how she meh to miraculous. I, she's got a, she's got a, I forget how I forget her actual slogan, but it's something like that. So I took the, the, the bead from meh to marvelous or whatever the word is. <laughs> According to Google, garter snakes are many colors. Weird to say, but some are so cool. Ooh, I'll have to look up more snakes and see. So here's, here's, we've got that. So now we just have to bend the end so it's going to stay in place. I should probably show you guys how to make that wound uh, bead. And there, ooh, I like that. It maybe clashes a little bit with the eyes but not too bad but that's super interesting that's what you call like over the top so now this is cool ideas already in my head yay Christina what are oh those are snake emojis I'm like what are those little green ducks no they're snakes so there we go so that is super interesting this might kind of get in the way but yeah somebody had suggested we bend it so maybe we can bend it up Again, like if it's going to be like sitting down too much, I think that was a good idea to bend this up a little bit more. Who suggested that? Someone said to bend the tail. San Taylor said to bend the tail. So San, uh, great idea. Let's just bend the tail up a little bit. And then we're going to bring this one in here a little bit. And then I'll show you guys how I wound that bead because that's practical to know. So this is very, very interesting i think there's a lot of potential with this you guys can definitely from me to a <laughs> me to a oh i have to find out what she said on her on her website um i'll find it i'll find it for sure so here's the one and then here's the other one like that and now i'm going to show you how to wind those um tell me what you what you guys think of these two rings how you think it could be improved this is the plain one with the wire and um, with the single face. So let me know your feedback and I'm going to just look up, um, I'm going to look up that, uh, that slogan because it's really bothering me. So let me just see if I can find it. Uh, but da, da, da. I have three devices going now and I'll see if I can find her slogan. She might have changed it though because she changes, she's uh, changed her business over the years. Uh, business Betterment is the name of her business, and her name is Serena Miller. I'm getting off topic, but this is really inspiring. So let me just look up the website. Um, ba -da -ba -da. There we go. Ah, I found it. She takes your business from meh to magnificent. How beautiful is that, that, that slogan? I love it. So I have chubby fingers. I'm going to have to make an anaconda ring. <laughs> That's hilarious. So now those are those. So let me show you how I wound the, uh, the wire. You could make one that wraps around a treasure bead. Ooh, that's interesting. I've never heard that expression, a treasure bead. I don't know what that is. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's try to wind the wire around a bead to show you. So I can even do it with a larger bead to show you. So say we take like, this is an eight millimeter bead. We can take that. And then I need the 20 gauge wire again. So I'm gonna take the 20 gauge wire. And this one's really, the para wire is super soft. So I don't mind just to use, use this stuff up because I generally don't use it. And we're gonna take like a piece, I don't know, six to eight inches or something. And what you can do is, uh, I'm trying to remember how I did this before. I just took a piece of, let me take a thicker wire first. I'll just take a scrap thicker wire. Uh, love you both, love them both, depends on your mood, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, and I'm fascinated, Pipea, what the uh, treasure bead is. So maybe just me to mean a special bead. So now if you put this on the end here, uh, I do have a tutorial for this, but I forget exactly how I did it. So let's just try this. So if we're going to go here and we can just take this one and wind it around. I think you have to actually bend the end so it holds in place. So we're going to bend that. 
hold this one here and then just wind it around. Okay, we're gonna go wind it. Can you guys see this? Hopefully you can see this. We're gonna wind it around a few times just to, just to make it like nice and fancy. And then you can go around here. I'll link up the tutorial where I actually did this properly. So we're gonna go around here. And then there's our first bit like that. And then we can just clip that in, pull it in a little more so that hole is a little tighter. Okay, we're gonna just clip that one here. So we'll just give that one a little clip. And then from there, we're gonna close that one up there. And then we're just going to take this one and do the same down here. Now, if it helps, just bend this other wire here so it's going to like hold it in place because otherwise it's wiggling all over the place. Um, and then you're gonna take this one, actually maybe it's better to have it straight up. We're gonna do that. So we're gonna bring that one here and then just bring that one all the way around, okay? And then pull it tight. Helps if you have fingernails. And then like do as many rounds as you want. You know, if you want more rounds, just backtrack it a bit. And if it also, if it, you're having trouble winding it around with it getting distorted, do it, hold it with the pliers. And then that helps make it a little tighter bend. And then take this, give it a good tug and clip that end here and push that down. And then you can do any adjusting that you need to do. Like if you need to adjust these, there we go. And then you just open these wires up and you have this beautiful like bead that's wound in the, uh, in the wire. So now if you wanna just like maybe make a ring with that or something, you totally can do that. So probably if I was gonna make a ring with that one, I could actually just even reuse this little scrap piece that I cut and we're gonna wind it around a ring cone. This is gonna be so much easier than the, than the snake, guys. So we're gonna just wind it around, you know, to whatever size you want. And then we're going to just cut a little thing here. Look in the bead suit for, a, yes, definitely. Uh, perfect, start watching the chores, they're great. Thank you. So we're just gonna bring this one around here and we're gonna do like a little loop here. Okay, this one here, and then we're gonna just give it a little bit of a clip. Okay, uh, treasure bees can be anything. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're like special beads, exactly. And it's funny because when I used to do a lot of kids' workshops, I would just bring all my regular beads and stuff, but then I'd have a little bit of, like a little pot of, like like you said, treasure beads. I just called them special beads. And people, the kids were allowed to choose the one or two for their projects. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. So now we wanna make sure like this is gonna be about the right size there. And we're just going to make a loop on this side. And this is the classic design for the rings to make and sell that I did. Like I did one a few years ago and then I did an updated version made filmed on my better camera this year. But I use this technique a lot where you do an 18 gauge base, like a very basic shape, and then you add whatever charm, bead, anything you want in the middle. Now this was a design that uh, the street vendors in Montreal used to sell tons of these in the 90s. So I used to sell jewelry on the streets of Montreal. And my friend uh, was actually the one who claimed to have invented this design, whereas I don't think she actually invented it because all the vendors were making them. But uh, yeah, so she thought this was her design. And, uh, but I'm pretty sure probably people in Europe all over the place make the same design, but it's a, it's a great design. It's so uh, versatile and there's so much you can do with it, you know? So now let's get the 22 gauge wire, or you can use 20 gauge wire to attach it, whichever one you prefer really, 20 or 22 works well. And we're just going to cut a piece, not too big, like, I don't know, five inches or something, if even. And we're gonna get this one, a crystal, ooh, a crystal bead would be nice. Yes, very nice. So now 
we're going to take this one and then you want to make sure these lines, these holes still line up. So you're going to stick that in there, comes out the other side, make sure it's through the loops because that'll help hold it in place, right? So we want to do that. So we're going to take this one and then I could have used 20 gauge wire as well. The 22 is quite thin. So we're going to bring this one down here and this one down here. And you can uh, either like put it down through that way if you want, or if you prefer, you could even bend these up. Whatever you prefer, you could you can have these bent up, like say, like it looked like I had made it a little bit too uh, big, so we could just bend these up if you prefer to do it that way. It really depends on what bead you're putting in the middle. If you're doing a bigger bead, it's a good option to push these up. And if you're doing a smaller bead, you don't really have to. So you want to just make sure these are at a bit of a right angle. You can always like put it back on the ring cone to be sure. So in that case, you don't even have to bend these. You can have them straight up. You can put that one in there. And then this one can just go up through this way. Might be easier. Actually, it might be easier if we just pull it up a little bit. Anyways, this it's pretty forgiving this wire. So we're gonna bring it through here. Okay, just right through there. Whoops, there we go. And uh yeah, so you can see that it's uh you might even want to put these more up, like because this this what bead is quite uh quite wide. So in theory, you could almost like make these higher, you know what I mean? Like make sure they go up to like the diameter of that bead. I think that's the key because you don't want this digging into your finger, right? So if you have these bent at an angle that's at about the diameter, not diameter, radius is the half of the bead. So if you have them at about the, the radius of the bead, then you can just take these and wind it around here. So we're just gonna take that one, wind it around a few times. I think I probably should have opted for the 20 a gauge wire. The 22 is quite thin, but you know, use what you have. It's totally fine. So you can wind this around two, three times, just around here. And then we're going to clip that one. Okay. And then this one, you want to make sure you pull it snugly. So pull it tight so that there's no slack in there. And then we're going to wind it around. So once you've pulled it tight, bring this one in here. And we're just going to like wind it around a few times. So we're going to go here. I'm making one right now, but I wanted to make it perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, I wanted to ask if you can make a video making a princess crown. Ooh, I did do a crown one time. I don't think it's still on my channel because... When they put in the rules about no kids kids content, um, I remove. I kind of panicked and I removed all my kids crafts and kids jewelry videos because I didn't want them to flag my channel um, because they started getting really strict about advertising on kids uh, content and because my channel is monetized, I didn't want to have any problems. So I sadly deleted all my kids tutorials. So I did have one that was a beaded crown and it was super cute. So maybe I can redo it and make it more adult orientated. <laughs> so there we have the little, this one looks really good actually. It's ended up being kind of tiny, but because I wanted the this bead not to dig in my finger, I'm actually super happy with this. And then you could like adjust these how you need. And there you have a very super cute and beautiful uh, ring barely fits on there, but that's okay. But it looks super cute. I'll probably do a tutorial for this one. I think it turned out really well. So guys, this is what we made today. We made a simple snake, very simple snake with all wire and just a silhouette of the head. We made a crazy town snake with wound wire and a funny little rattle thing on the end, which actually moves by the way and uh, his eyes and you guys can definitely like do wire weaving anything you want with that and then we made this very classic beautiful ring so guys that's it for today uh hammer it to make it bigger the ring yeah i could i could hammer it or i could push it further down on the ring cone a little bit but that's okay i generally don't wear these samples anyways i put them in a bag i have like thousands of these samples in a box in my basement so um 
So uh, maybe one day we'll do a retrospective of all my <laughs> jewelry samples for YouTube. Who knows? How about a taking a crown ring, but the crown will be... Yeah, okay, I'm talking about a crown ring. Crown ring would be cute too. And I actually had a request for a crown ring before, and I've done a crown just on the end of one of the names, which was cute, just a very simple one. So that's it, and Amber's still there. So I love them all for sure. Thank you so much. So guys, let me flip the screen. I'm gonna take a picture and put them in the post live stream section. Uh, of the discord group so there is a link in my all my yeah so there is a link in all my videos of to how to get to discord to join the discord group and you can um i'll share pictures of these and also i'll be working on more designs all the time thank you everybody for all your requests and be sure um after this i'm going to upload the new a call for entry to live wires for the win. So if you were worried about applying for live wires for the win because you had to submit a video, you don't anymore. All you need is to, to submit some photos of your work, a profile pic and a description of, you know, why you love wire and why you want to be a part of the uh, challenge. That would be great. And of course, if you don't want to join the elimination challenge, you can still join the ch uh, challenges each week when they air. Uh, and you could be eligible for all kinds of prizes. So I'm going to repost the call for entry for that after this. And uh, we'll see you guys on Discord. We'll see you in the Wire Makers Club. Thank you so much, everybody, for your great suggestions. And we will see you the next time.